Skies, Sir Fraser, Elizabeth Stewart, Santa Barbara's I Treasure Sleuth will help you put a value on the treasures in your own home. Every time it rains, it rains. Pennies from heaven. heaven. Don't you know each cloud contains pennies from heaven? So let's find out. Three. How valuable two, is it? One. You're live. Hello, 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 Santa Barbara. It's your Chantress of Everything Valuable and Beautiful, Elizabeth Stewart. And I am joined by three artists today who are part of the Ojai Studio Artists group. But more importantly, they are part of the Ojai Studio Artists Tour. That's going to happen October 7th through the 9th. And what is so cool about this is, first of all, it's Ojai, where the amount of talent and commitment to creativity is concentrated in a very small community. And there will be 60 artists on the tour. That is incredible. I mean, I when you think of the population of Ojai, to have 60 practicing artists on the tour, it's pretty darn impressive. So it's worth taking a day or two to meet the artists, go into their studios, talk to them directly about their process, admire the fruits of their labor. You get to be educated and inspired, and you might get, you might find the piece to take home. You just might. Um, all you'd have to do is go to the website. It's www.ohistudioartist.org. Sign up with your email address and you'll get a map of the valley with the six artists, 60 artist studio open to the public. Three day event over this holiday weekend. And uh, it, usually the studios are open 10 to 5, but everybody's got their own. Um, the map listing that you're going to get is going to note who is not open the mon- on the Monday. And then you could, if you wanted to start your visit with a quick trip to the Ojai Valley Museum, and you'll see the Turning Corners exhibit. Uh, and that is the Ojai Studio Artist exhibit. And it, that will help you decide who you want to visit and who you want to mark on that map for your tour, because you'll see selected works by these artists. And so this is a not to miss thing, because it's so impressive. You can select from 60 artists. That's amazing. Uh, I think it's the one of the largest studio tours in California. And um, today we have with us Christopher Noxton, Noxon, Carlos Grasso, and we have also M. Thomas. And I want to just welcome the three of them to the program. And I'm, hi, guys. Hi, Carlos. Hi, Christopher. Hi, M. Thank you for coming. And I want to introduce hi, a little bit. Hello, hello. I want to introduce a little bit um, the artist, Carlos Grasso. Let's start with him. He's an Argentinian native. Um, He's gaining notoriety for his mind tapestry series, 3D paintings, uh, immersive installation, and his previous canvas deconstruction paintings. Also, his shredded series. He spent 45 years abroad in France and the U.S., where he transitioned from a professional musician to a full-time artist. He moved from representational art to abstraction, mixed media installations, and conceptual art. In his studio, you'll find, when you tour, you'll find torn canvases, found objects, and large brushes, the tools of an inquisitive and imaginative mind. Carlos weaves a variety of stories and employs a range of techniques. Throughout the years, Carlos has exhibited his work in numerous museums and galleries, Galleries including the LA Art Show, the Museum of Ventura County, the Santa Paul Museum, the Ojai Valley Museum, ArtShare LA, the Orange County Center for the Contemporary Arts, Building Bridges in Santa Monica, and Bergamon Station in LA, and the San Diego Art Institute, among others. And um, he writes to me that he visits the collectors and curators who visit his studio with a welcome to my playground message. How cool. He says, my art requires the element of play, whether designing my own colorful mandalas on paper and canvas, cutting and shredding painting, uh, painting canvases by hand, or assembling found objects. The more I get out of my own way, the more creativity flows unobstructive and strangely enough, 
the more I control my medium. So we want to talk with Carlos about that really enigmatic statement there. We, um, let me introduce Christopher. Christopher paints and writes in Ojai. He became he began painting seriously in midlife after raising kids and working as a journalist and illustrator in Los Angeles. I looked at this show. Sullivan Goss did a show in Santa Barbara in 2023 in the exhibit, Betty Lane and Christopher Knox Knoxon from one generation to the next. Very cool because that was his grandmother, who's also an artist, I learned. His work is in the permanent collection of the Ojai Valley Museum. He's shown in Gallery 825 in Los Angeles, the Santa Paula Art Museum, the Beatrice Wood Center for the Arts. His writings and illustrations have appeared in The New Yorker, The Atlantic, The New York Times Magazine, his books include Good Trouble, Lessons from the Civil Rights Playbook, Plus One, a novel, and Rejuvenile, Kickball, Cartoons, Cupcakes, and the Reinvention of the American Grown-Up. How cool is that? Fantastic. M is with us. Simple background about M. She's an abstract la landscape painter based in Ojai. She focuses on the color and the feel of familiar places. The process of a painting is what she finds interesting and special. She is an ultra runner. She's a backpacker. Her inspiration comes from those experiences. Her degree is in printmaking, and then was she morphed to painting. She is just returned to Ojai from a summer residence in Maine, and she'll be full time in the Ojai studio. And she's starting up another session of after school art at the Carpentria Art Center. She has been there teaching for a couple of years now, and she loves it. Um, she, that, so, so those are our three artists that you will have the opportunity to, to visit with, go into their studios, see their process. And uh, I guess what we'll do is we'll take it. Richard? Okay, Richard. <laughs> our producer skipped out for a minute. So I want to start with Carlos. And Carlos, would you explain to me this... Um, statement that the more you get out of your way, the more creativity flows um, unobstructed and the more you control the medium. Can you explain that? Uh, I'll try. Thank you, Elizabeth <laughs> and Richard, for this podcast, first of all. And uh, well, I believe that uh, as, as everything, when we start, um, our journey as artists, first we acquire a lot of techniques, uh, we acquire a lot of, uh, a, a lot of uh, savoir faire uh, things, but at a certain point we have to let it go, meaning uh, the technique has to be digested. And so the less, the less we become self-conscious when we paint, and that's what I mean by getting out of your own way, the, the more just creativity flows through your nervous system that acquire these kinds of um, uh, the techniques, uh, let's say. So in that sense, uh, emotion can, can flow through uh, in music, in writing, in, in, in art, it's, it's all the same. It's, it's, it's completely the same. So that's what I meant um, uh, about that. You are in the immediacy of the moment, and actually you are not there. <laughs> you are not there. Meaning um, Carlos Grasso at that moment becomes like a, another brush for this uh, creativity flow that uh, that in itself is a connection with many other things that are inexplicable, right? Uh, at, uh, it, uh, and so, uh, but for that, a certain level, I wouldn't say of mastery, but a certain level of self-confidence has to be built uh, because the work of art is the result of, of also uh, an exploration. And the more we explore in that sense, the more it will have uh, an intrinsic meaning. And uh, so I, I consider that what I do actually, I, 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 sometimes I, 
I see um, uh, uh, work that I did in the past, and it's like it is completely <laughs> foreign to me. I say, did I do that? And I, I don't even recall. And if I had to do it again, I wouldn't be able to, because I wasn't, I, meaning Carlos Grasso, wasn't there to, to produce that. Was the whole construct of, if you wish, the universe or something, making that piece of art um, a little bit like children. You just dump it, dump them into the world and they develop by themselves. You can direct them, coach them in a certain way, but eventually they are no longer yours, right? It's, it's out in the open. So I find it really interesting looking at your website and your background, et cetera. I find it really interesting that you transitioned from a musician to a full-time artist. And also, coincidentally, you moved from representational art and you studied under a great master uh, to abstraction, mixed media installations and conceptual art. And it's so interesting because I had a, a niece that was... Um, at art school at NYU, uh, at the Tisch School there, and uh, she was visual artist. They did not start with representation. They, and to me, that was a big mistake in art education today because I thought, how can you have a bedrock? How can you jump off into conceptual art if you don't have the bedrock of representational art. I found it really interesting that you had that really solidly for years, you know, and, and, uh, but my niece was just jumping into conceptual art and abstract art and art philosophy before she did any kind of mm -hmm. life drawing or any kind of representational. It was very interesting to go on that journey with her a little bit and uh, how different the training was. Um, today, but I, I see. Oh, I also want to mention that Carlos has a really great quote on his website by Mark Mark Rothko. Um, it's the painting is not a picture of an experience; it is an experience. That's so cool. Richard's giving us a sign that we have to go to quick break, so we're going to go to station break for a minute. And I want to just do a shout out, Christopher, who is with us today. In a former life, he had various hats that he wore during his careers, very, many careers. He was a, um, an agent or a representational uh, consultant for TVs, TV shows and, and movies, et cetera, where he was recommending and designing soundscapes. How fantastic is that? So he took it upon himself to do the music for today's show that's going to go in and out of our breaks. So a thank you to Christopher for that. Let's go to a quick break. We get back from the break. I want to talk a little bit with Christopher about, first of all, the show, Betty Lane and Christopher Knoxon. I want to talk about that show. And I want to talk about the relationship between writing illustration, writing his writing, his illustrations, and his present work, which, by the way, is extremely interesting, very colorful, really amazing. And I don't know, the composition is super super interesting to me so we get back from the break i want to talk about a little about uh, christopher's um christopher's career and how he how he creates and a little bit about his family legacy too very interesting richard let's go to quick break you're clear hey, richard. okay <laughs> you're clear and and you you don't need to call for me I'm right here. I'm listening. And if you call for the break, just go there. Okay. 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 I do indeed. <laughs> it, it shows that, that people can. It really hurts when, when people, uh, I got hosts who will, uh, cause I give those hand signals, you know, the two minutes, the one minute and so forth. And they'll say, Ignore Richard. It's like, hey, hey, that hurts. That really hurts. Elizabeth doesn't do that, though. How long are the breaks, Richard? Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay. So if you can, smoke them if you got them. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> I've worked alone yeah. since uh, COVID started. I've worked alone too much, and um, I'm I'm about to uh, go. Whoa, go right over the uh, proverbial edge. Are you an artist, Richard? Too. Say again. Are you an artist? Um, I'm going to say yes, in that I do some drawing, uh, I do okay. some singing, and then I have my own program called Tell Me Your Story, New Paradigms for a New World. Um, oh. Okay, and I just got a new another book from a potential um, guest, uh, and so forth. So I'm always looking for the more esoteric and metaphysical bents to things. Oh, you have a, a YouTube. You have a channel, a YouTube channel, or something, or I have a YouTube channel. It's called "Tell Me Your Story." You can just Google me, uh, Richard Dugan, okay. or and or "Tell Me Your Story." The podcasts are also on SoundCloud and Spotify, and a lot of the upper end stuff. Okay, folks, we're about to come back. I just loves me a good juice harp. All righty, here we go. And then I'm going back up into the Appalachia Mountains. In three, two, one, you live. Welcome back. It's Elizabeth Stewart. I'm talking with three artists that are participating in the Ojai Studio Artist Tour, October 7th through the 9th. Get a map, support the arts, go and visit any one or two or three or four or 15 or 60. Can you believe 60 studios will be open? three-day event over a holiday weekend, um, Monday as well. And uh, some of the artists will still be open on Monday. Um, and like I said at the beginning of the show, Ojai is just a, it just floors me every time. Basically, this this tour is noteworthy because it's one of the biggest in California. Second of all, this is in Ojai. And the amount, the amount of talent and commitment to creativity that's concentrated in Ojai is astounding. I'm always just amazed when I interview any group from Ojai that's an artistic or creative group at the depth of talent. And that goes to theater, that goes to the writers there, that goes to the fine artists there, that goes anybody that's involved in the creative world in Ojai. It's this very, very special place. This is a very special tour because there's 60 studios that are open. Amazing. We were talking with Carlos Grasso about his his process, and it was so interesting to me. He was saying that he's got to get out of his own way. As a matter of fact, as an example, he used that if he looks at a piece that he's done a, a number of years back, he says, oh, gee, that's, I wonder who did that. That's kind of good. That's kind of nice. I wonder who did that. He, he doesn't necessarily recognize that it's his piece because he wasn't there while it was being done. <laughs> the essence of Carlos was there, but not Carlos. So we we understand that. And now we want to talk a little bit with Christopher Knoxon. And Christopher had a show just this year at Sullivan Goss, Betty Lane and Christopher Knoxon from one generation to the next. His grandmother was a visual artist. And um, tell us a little, Christopher, about that show at Sullivan Goss. So my grandma, uh, Betty Lane, was a painter in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and she painted her whole life. She was this incredibly fierce, independent, kind of weird single woman who lived in the woods in a house that she built herself. I grew up going to see her in the summers, and I kind of idolized her. She was this sort of witchy lady who made these incredible paintings just her whole life. She taught a lot. She lived very frugally. She was collected some... Um, she's in the uh, Metropolitan Museum. Uh, she had a couple of galleries that represented her, but she never really made the bigs. But uh, when she died, my father took her estate on and got her represented some more. Eventually, she ended up in, at Sullivan Goss. They've been representing her for about 20 years. Um, and I inherited or came into possession of all her work about um, three years ago when I moved to Ojai. So I had never really painted before. I had drawn a lot and done some illustration for books, but um, her legacy and her memory was really strong. And so I started sort of teaching myself to paint by looking at her work really closely. 
And so that has been sort of my journey. I, I moved up here and started looking around and feeling this place. And I had a teacher who was my grandma. So uh, I made a bunch of work and uh, Sullivan Goss came down and decided they wanted to do a two person show, which was one of the most incredibly, I mean, it was such an honor and it felt so great to, to be in the same space. It was very intimidating, I have to tell you, because she was an intimidating woman. And so to have her work and my work paired together felt like, all right, which one of these two things doesn't belong? Um, but I feel like her spirit was there and I felt her being very happy that uh, we could show together. So, so okay, so which parent was- It's my dad's mom. To, my your, father's Your dad's mother. mom. Okay, now, then she did she ever come to California? Yeah, she would come here occasionally, but it wasn't her primary place. Her primary place was Ohio. I mean, sorry, her primary place was Brewster, Massachusetts, out in uh, in Cape Cod. Okay, and so and so, but Sullivan Goss decided to represent her. She's a sort uh, of she's an important twentieth century female artist who was sort of neglected, and there have been a lot of rediscoveries over the past ten or fifteen years of of women who were making work at a time that they were not getting the recognition that they deserved. So she's she's now sort of in in league with a lot of other sort of uh, artists who were not not given their credit while they were working. I see, okay. And then she was your teacher. How old were you when she passed? Uh, I was in my early 20s. And I knew her because I lived on Cape Cod. I was a writer there. I was a writer for a local newspaper. So I got to spend a lot of time with her. Um, towards the end of her life. How remarkable. What a fantastic story. And uh, when did you come to Ojai? Uh, three years ago. So I was one of the, the, the sort of wave of pandemic people who fled Los Angeles. Um, I came up here right at the beginning of the, uh, of the lockdown and then found I really loved it. Um, and I'm now just a crazy evangelist for this place. And I hooked up with the Osa community pretty quickly. And um, boy, has that been a real gift. Um, there are some, as you say, there's just some remarkable talents who kind of work in isolation. You know, I think uh, there's people here that work steadily on their own all year round, making these incredibly sophisticated world-class pieces that we only get a chance to see sort of once a year at this event. Um, if you go to the the museum and check out the array of work that's there. Uh, I think it's really important for people who are coming to sort of have a list of places they want to go and not just kind of show up and wander around because, you know, there's so, so much variety. There's textiles, there's sculpture, there's, you know, fine art, there's uh, jewelry, there's uh, photography. And so it's good to have a sort of game plan. And also what's so interesting is that, that Ojai's got a really, uh, at least the Ojai studio artists, group, as, as Christopher was saying, OSA, that group has a really broad umbrella for what they consider art. I know my friend Hallie, the silver jewelry maker, silversmith, she was the one who suggested that I do a show about this particular, this particular year's tour, because it was so vast and so diverse. And as you say, Christopher, yeah, you, you get these people that are just, as you say, world-class artists that are just up there you know, working, and uh, there they are in Ojai, and you get a chance to actually meet them and see them. Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of fun, also because some of these properties, some of the places that people work, are so amazing. There's stuff up in these secluded canyons. There's these sort of backyard wonderlands that people have set up. There's um, tiny little studios. There's vast places. It's it's a great uh, sort of adventure. Yeah. Just before we go to quick break, what's your studio like? Uh, I live on a two acre uh, former olive grove. So you sort of wander through these olive trees and I've got a freestanding barn that's filled with stuff. So I, I think it's kind of special. What about you, Carlos? What's your studio like? Okay, I have um, a small room in a two bedroom uh, little guest house up on a hill. Is, is here in a Saddle Mountain. It's, it's a place in Ojai, beautiful, with great gardens around and surrounded by nature. But it's just a small room. <laughs> yeah. 
And Em, what's your studio like? Uh, my studio is basically it's in an office plaza. Um, and it's probably one, two, three, four okay size rooms. So it's pretty big and I have a couple of people in there as well. So we share it. It's nice. Yeah. You oh it's a shared studio. Yeah, um, I just took over the lease actually. So it's prop maybe it's a thousand square feet. I'm not sure, but we've divided it into a couple different sections. I'm gonna start a little um art collective in there. An art collective. Okay. It's yeah. very different. It's, yeah, the three studios, very, very different. Um, I want to just say about M's work, it's pretty special it's pretty interesting and, and it's also when she she wrote to me that she was um an ultra runner it it kind of made sense and we we'll, want to talk about that a little bit when we get back from the break how that fits in m's kind of oeuvre and uh she also is a, a backpacker how that fits and um is it m do you prefer m or emily m I mean, my name's Emily, but I mean, people call me Em. It's either way. Okay. All right. We get back from the break. I want to talk a little bit about, about Em's process. And let's go to quick break, Richard. And when we get back, just another shout out. This show is to support the Ojai Studio Artist Tour, which is happening in Ojai October 7th through the 9th. It is a fantastic opportunity. I know some of my friends go up there and they stay at the Ojai Inn and they spend the whole weekend touring the, the studios. And as Christopher says, it's not just the studio, it's not just the artist, it's not just the work, but it's the experience of it because some of these studios are mind blowing and uh, they're beautiful in many cases because of course it's so high, but uh, they are, as Christopher says, some of them are so eccentric, you know, that he used the term of little wonderland some of them are, they found objects, sculpture, you wander through, there's the little, it's just, you know, it is trippy in some cases. Okay, don't turn that down. Back in a minute with the Ojai Studio Artist Tour. I'm here with Carl, three artists, Carlos Grasso, Christopher Noxon, and M. Thomas. Don't turn that down. Back in a minute. Very good, very good. And you're clear. Let's take some water. Go get some water while you got two minutes. <laughs> Carlos, do you know my friend Alejandro Figueroa? Do you know Alejandra? Oh Ale Alejandra or Alejandro? It's Alejandra. It's a it's Alejandra. a woman, Alejandra. Alejandra. Uh, she lives in Ojai? No, she lives down here. Um, you gotta know her. She no. is a powerhouse. So she is the president or founder of uh, Nomad Tango. And for the past four years, she's been hosting uh Milagos, Milagas, Milangas. She has, Milongas. She, okay. Yeah, she, 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 yeah, Milongas. And she, um, and, and she brings the most amazing uh, musicians, artists, dancers from Argentina, um, both very gritty, new wave, like street artists who do, uh, <laughs> they use dance in their, in their work. Anything that's yes, even I closely see. related to tango. Um, you know, m whether it be cl very classical, she also, um, mm -hmm. did, I have to get you two together. She, she helped our university, the UCSB rediscover the archive of a very famous French gentleman who collected, uh, all manner of, uh, records from the 19 teens to the twenties to uh, onward from our Argentina. And so they, oh, wow. she helped, you know, she helped the, the university purchased that collection in two waves and then she supplied the university with a scholar who was both a musician and a tango expert 
Um, but she has and, a website or something that we can. Uh, a yeah, website so or something that we can. All right, we're coming you. back. We're I'll coming back in off. three, okay. two, one. You're live. Welcome back. It's Elizabeth Stewart. We're speaking about the Ojai Studio Artist Tour, October 7th through the 9th. Get a map, support the arts in Ojai. It is, I don't, I mean, it, it, it's it's amazing because it's 60. I don't think we've had that many ever. 60, 60 studios. Um, go out there and uh, it's this beautiful weekend. You get a map of, of the valley. In the valley, you're going to find the 60 artists. And what I would suggest is you stop by the Ojai Valley Museum before you go to see the Turning Corners exhibit. That is the exhibit of everybody who is showing all the OSA, Ojai Studio Artist, Artists, all of their work, or not all their work, but a selection of their work. What you can do is you can look at what's on the walls in the displays, et cetera, and you can decide what who you want to visit. And... Uh, Plan your map out, and there you go. You just will have the, uh, the, a wonderful weekend ahead of you. Um, I'm here visiting with three of the artists. I'm here visiting with M. Thomas, Carlos Grasso, and Christopher Knoxon, and we're talking about their process, their studio, uh, what informs their work, et cetera. And we had a little conversation with Carlos that kind of was slightly mind bending in that he said that he gets out of his own way when he paints. And as a matter of fact, if he looks at a work uh, that he has painted in the past, sometimes he doesn't recognize it because as he said, he wasn't there when it happened. <laughs> and Christopher also was talking to us about his journey. His grandmother, who was um, uh, 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 now a famous painter, Betty Lane, and uh, growing up with her on the Cape in a little kind of cabin, and Christopher would go and visit. Uh, she passed when he was in his 20s, but not before he really picked up her spirit and her desire to paint and her love for the creative life, etc. cetera, uh, and recently had a show at Sullivan Goss, Betty Lane and Christopher Knoxon from one generation to the next, a recent show of the two of their works. And uh, I'm here also with M. Thomas. And M. is just telling us uh, she's an abstract landscape painter. She focuses on the color and feel of familiar places. She's interested in the process of painting, but she's also an ultra runner. That's something to think about. And she loves to backpack. So M., how does the running come into your life? Um, well, into my life, I, I mean, I've always been kind of into running. Um, I've just added the ultras because they're a little longer and it's uh, not weird if you're doing an ultra race. It's fine. Um, but I think it um, it goes hand in hand with like my art process because I am absorbing and observing when I'm running that far. And I mean, I take my time. It's not like I'm, you know, charging anywhere to win. So I'm really looking around and seeing and feeling all the compositions and colors, textures. So I think I'm kind of absorb those and then I'll process that and work it out in the studio. How long is an ultra run? Um, it's, um, it's a running race, like anything longer than a, a marathon. So it's like 33 miles to 100 or 200 miles. Wow. <laughs> wow, I'm impressed. Okay, and so while you're running, you're observing. And how are, are you making notes as you're running? You know, for example, oh, I see something and I want to capture that. Do you make a note? Yeah, I mean, when I'm running, I will, I look at stuff, obviously, and I think, oh, that's so beautiful. And I'll, I'll maybe I'll take a quick picture. And so that's kind of my little sketch. But when I'm backpacking or hiking, I definitely bring a sketchbook and watercolors. So I'll do a quick little sketch. And so that's a little different. I'll, I'll have a little more time to do it, but yeah. The running is just really fun mentally for me to calm things down. So like really transcendental at a certain point. So that's pretty cool. Pretty and then you, 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 you were trained as a printmaker. Is that right? Yeah. I, 
spent most of my time printmaking and um, a lot of time drawing. So like Carlos said, it's, um, you know, you acquired the skills and the techniques and then you let those um, digest. And I think that's so the, perfectly put. So it's true. So you kind of can work things out, not thinking about like, oh, how do I draw this? You know, how am I going to do it? That's just kind of a second nature, you know, for, I, I think for us at this point. So, yeah. And Carlos, you're shaking, you're, you're, you're agreeing with her. I see you nodding your head in agreement. Can you explain what you agree with? With everything she said. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, it's a uh, right on, right on it. I mean, the more you, um, it, it becomes uh, not even a second nature. It becomes, if your own nature goes through, it's not that you acquire a second nature, it's that you are in your own essential nature, just doing whatever you are doing without, and, and what Em was saying is so true, without thinking about it. You know, the, the, you start thinking, mm, that's danger, dangerous. <laughs> I mean, there is a process that you, you want to think about it, and the, the recognition of that you are taking a road that is not good for the work that you are doing, definitely. And then, but then get rid of the thinking, you are there, immediacy, spontaneity, the moment, like Em was saying. Yeah, absolutely. And so Em, a question for you, what time of day do you tend to sit in the studio, get to the studio? What, when do you, when's your creative time of the day? Um. That's well interesting. I think now um, it's more in the morning, afternoon. I get a little antsy in the afternoon, evening. But um, you know, my routine is kind of like I'll do a nice little workout in the morning, some yoga, meditation, and then go to the studio, do whatever I need to do until it's time to leave. But it's funny because when I was younger, um, I was such a night owl, and I would work all night but now no no it's not that way so. <laughs> what about you carlos what's your what's your creative arc A any time of the day it could be in the morning uh the, the afternoon the evening the night there is no schedule i know that some people uh, work better with schedule uh definitely i try sometimes to 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 get that into my into my brain i i couldn't so it could be any time. It's, it's just a, a mesh kind of a, like a, yeah. So no, no, no schedule. How about you, Christopher? Uh, I guess I'm a little bit more like am a little bit more norm core, you know, as a, as a former uh, working stiff, I keep fairly regular work hours. I, I kind of guard about a four to five hour period every day where I'm in the studio. Um, as I get older, I find I wake up in the middle of the night, sometimes two, three, four in the morning. And so I'll often just go out and uh, spend a couple hours in the studio at that time. That's a great advantage to having a studio on my, on my, at my home. Um, and also, cause I, I feel like when I'm kind of half awake, I make bigger swings. I, I tried uh, much more risky moves and I'm almost always happier with those results because I, I do agree that it's like, I was thinking as you guys were talking about Sister Corita, who was an incredible printmaker and artist from the 60s and 70s, who was also an art teacher for um, people at Immaculate Heart High School in LA. She was admired by Warhol and she had these rules on her studio wall of the rules of, of learning and making art. And one of them that I was thinking about yesterday was don't try to create and analyze at the same time. They're different processes. I think about that a lot, which is, you know, the moment, I think what Carlos said about thinking is really true that, you know, that you can, I think before I start a work, I, you know, do some, I do some sketches. I think about color. I try to, I, sometimes I'll have a reference image. Sometimes I'll have a reference inspiration image, but then when you're working, the, the, the less you're thinking, the better. It's really interesting. I have to say, I, you know, over the years, um, so I've been doing this show for 15 years every Friday, and I've covered a lot of 
a lot of artists uh, in my time. And of course, I'm an appraiser of art and uh, trained in, in art, uh, in art history, et cetera. Um, I lived that life, but, but it was so interesting to visit uh, Hemingway's studio in Cuba. Um, I visited there and I was struck by two things, the wear on the typewriter keys and the wear on the chair seat. And I asked, there wasn't much of a guide. I mean, it's in the middle of nowhere. But I, I asked about that and I said, look, that, that chair is like the, the board of the, of the seat is like almost, you know, you could almost see like it's like sanded almost like, you know. And he said, well, yeah, you know, he had a philosophy. Hemingway had a philosophy. He would be in that seat at X hour in the morning. He would not get up until X in the afternoon. And he didn't, if, if, he, if nothing was coming, nothing came, but he would be there, but in chair. And um, so, you know, that was his process. And then on the other hand, I've interviewed some artists who they, they're like that. There's like, okay, I have a regular schedule. It's I'm always asking, I'm, I'm always interested. Some artists are like, no, I like the sort of mythological concept of the genie, you know, a pe just coming in and or or the the voodoo style where the god just drops down and sits on your head. The god the gods of creativity. And they can drop at any time. There's an old so, quote, there's an old quote that I love, which was inspiration has to find you working. Um, so yes, inspiration, but if you're not, you know, prepared with your materials and your and your time, it's gonna go. So I try to be working. I think I, I I think I completely agree with you guys. <clears throat> and uh, if if we want if if one waits for the muse to come and guide you through, you can wait. I mean, you will lose a lot of time. Sometimes I remember my teacher, uh, David Lefeu, he used to tell me, okay, if, if you start working and if you don't have the inspiration coming to you, the muse singing on your ear, you start doing the palette of your colors. You start uh, uh, arranging your studio. You start uh, doing, doing, doing things related and suddenly, suddenly something starts happening, right? So we cannot wait the inspiration. We need to make it happen by some, some kind of uh, work, a preparatory work for that to show up. Uh, that is what uh, Christopher was saying completely. I agree, yeah, yes, yeah. I think it's, it's also interesting that, um, to talk about the different we were mentioning a little bit, Christopher and M mentioned a little bit about when we were younger and the, the fact that they're not old folks at all. Not, none of us are here, but the, the idea is that what, what does that mean to, to be, you know, going through the years as an artist? And I can remember um, in my own life, you know, going back to grad school, um, you know, in the second quarter, the second half of my life. So go back to grad school, do a master's, then go back again, do a PhD in, a, in the second half of my life. What was that like? And I can remember, you know, I'm there with 20 somethings, you know, and I'm 50s in my 50s, et cetera. So I can remember having the, upper, the, the advantage of being able to work, be prepared to work by multitasking, like Carlos was saying, on many different things, able to multitask because, you know, single mom, kids, grad school, work, et cetera. So I was able to multitask on a lot of different levels. And I found exactly what Carlos is saying. So you're multitasking kind of around that area. And before you know it, you picked up that pen and paper and you're off to the races. So, but I had the advantage of a really um, a great talent, <laughs> unfortunately forced talent of multitasking because of the fact that I you know, was a, single mom with a lot of stuff on the boil, work, career, school, kids, you know, all that. So I, I learned that. I know what you're talking about. Uh, inspiration's got to find you working, as Christopher says. That's fantastic. Yeah. 
Uh, Richard, let's go to quick break. Uh, also, another shout out that all the music that you're hearing during the breaks, that's thanks to Christopher, who was, um, what do you call it, Christopher? What was the, the job title? Uh, it was a music supervisor. So basically, I just picked songs. I wasn't in charge of creating the score. I did work with the composers a little bit, but I helped pick the songs and then license them for broadcast. You know, um, it's interesting that two of our artists here have a background in music. Uh, very interesting because I don't, I mean, music is exactly that. That's highly disciplined when you're training. And then when you're performing, for example, you got to get that other level going. And I, I'm wondering what, what, how did that musical path lead you to the visual arts? And especially Carlos and Christopher would answer that when we get back from the break. Studio Artist Tour, that's what we're here celebrating. And it's the Ojai Studio Artist Tour, October 7th through the 9th. Go ahead to ojaistudioartist.org and just look at the map. There's 60 artists on this tour. 60 studios in all kinds of different shapes and forms and idiosyncrasies, all kinds. Not to be missed, Ojai Studio Artist Tour. The preview is at the Ojai Valley Museum. You're going to see the Turning Corners exhibit, and it'll help you decide who you want to visit. The Ojai Studio Artist Tour, the 7th through the 9th of October. Uh, Richards, go to quick break. You are clear. I like that out cue better. Everybody having fun? Oh, yeah. 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 Are you guys going to the reception tonight? Yes. Yes. You? Yeah, I'm going. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I haven't seen hey, the Elizabeth, show. Actually. Are you coming to the tour? Me? Yeah, I'm coming to the tour, but I'm not not the reception. I don't think. Um, but I want to. No, see no, that. I understand. Yeah. Um, I think that yeah, this is going to be a really good year. Um, but it it it's it's weird. So that, like, my partner's a photographer, and uh, if I tell him, you know, um, I I fall more into the school of Hemingway, which is you know, butt in chair. And he falls more into the school of let the muse drop on my head. And, uh, you know, it, it's the really different ways of working. But, yeah. Absolutely. I, I'll point out that uh, Hemingway shot himself in the head. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, like, I think the number one rule for all of this is stay alive. And, mm. <laughs> and I mean... Anyway, kind of a downer, yeah. Chris. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh it's God. like I quit. <laughs> Carlos, someone at the museum. Uh, you know, I'm, I work on the board over there and they were like, have you checked out uh, the glasses on your painting? You know, the 3D glasses that you've got next to yours. So it turns out that your glasses on my painting totally changes it. Um, uh, you know, I know those glasses work for everything. And if you see not only yours, but if you see also um, Doug's, Doug's video with those glasses, it's, it's, it's an incredible experience, yeah. Oh yeah, these glasses work not only with my paintings, but with, uh, I mean, you have to do the painting for the glasses, right? But uh, everything works with it because yeah. the, the reds go forward with it. Yeah. That's fun. <laughs> I think Giacometti was another one that had a real definite time of where he went into the studio or foundry etc and then when he left but he ended up i think also offing himself maybe there's a relationship there maybe christopher listen your next book <laughs> stay alive don't be too disciplined <laughs>
<laughs> there is a quote of uh, a very famous quote of uh, one art. I I don't know who said that. Says I think it was um, uh, a modern artist, but I I don't recall who was the inspiration is for amateurs. The rest of us just show up and get to work. <laughs> yeah, it's it's um, uh, uh, this guy that. Uh, you know, the photographs, he put circles on people. Oh, man. John Baldessari? John Baldessari. I think it, I think it was his, but um, yeah. Oh, Chuck, Chuck Close? Chuck Close. Uh, uh, no, yeah. he, he, he having that could be Chuck Close, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that, right, right, right. So that's the idea. <laughs> well, Chuck Close, um, doesn't he have a certain visual all right here we go final segment and you have three minutes in three two one you're live welcome back it's elizabeth Sturz. So speaking with three artists who are our representatives today for the ojai studio artist tour october 7th through the 9th and like i suggested i want to just throw the floor open christopher do you have a question for m or carlos i want to just in the last three minutes very quickly uh, I guess it's something that I've been thinking about and wonder how you have tackled yourself, which is how much attention do you pay and be honest <laughs> in making work towards what you think will sell versus what you're feeling in your gut, your heart, your your artistic self? Carlos. Uh, uh, none. And. Um, I used to care about it, but it didn't feel right. So I just do it for me. Okay. Em, do you have a question? Oh, I didn't. Uh, I don't have any questions at the moment. I'm sorry. I didn't think about okay. that. Okay. How, how about Carlos? Yes. Uh, Christopher, Em, could you briefly describe what we will see when we visit your studio this coming weekend? So uh, what we will see there, so because this is a podcast, so people visually won't have uh, the, the, the possibility of seeing what you do, except if you go to the uh, um, museum or at the Ohio Studio Artist website to see your work. So what are we going to encounter in your studios? And ladies first. <laughs> um, well, I have, um, a, I expanded my space, so I have a bigger space, and I'm going to be sharing a space with Joss O'Coin. She's also in the artist group, so you can see both of our work. And um, I've got, oh, yeah, I just got back from Maine from the whole summer, so I have a bunch of paintings that I did in Maine. So that'll be nice to see. And yeah, that's about it. Just new, I have so much stuff, so. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I have a lot of original paintings. I do very colorful landscapes, mainly of the Ojai Valley, but also some of Prospect Park in Brooklyn and some scenes from Italy where I've traveled. Um, they're very vibrant, sort of fauvist, uh, and also some monotype prints and other prints. Thank you guys. Ojai Studio Tour, October 7th through the 9th. Thank you all for joining me. You all did a great job. Thank you so much. Yeah, indeed. That's fantastic. Thank you, guys. I'll send you this. And like I said, you can use it however, you know, if you want to put, use it as publicity, if you want to cut it, do anything you want with it, I'll send you the the, the, the link and you can play with it any way you want. And uh, anyway, we'll see you soon. Please come Thank back. You. Nice to meet you. Thank, Thank you. you everybody. Nice to meet you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thanks. Oh, and Carlos, I'll, I'll send you that link to Alejandra's work. Please. Thank you so yeah. much. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.
Hello, my friends. Hello. Hello, Richard. No, you know. just called for me to say hello. I think about you every Friday. I have to turn it on, but I can't actually see the video. So we're going to. Oh, there it is. Hello. Yeah, Lisa has a bra on. See, well, it says start good. video. Oh, he can hear us. We would. I can hear you. Without her bra on. Wait a minute. Look at that old dead guy. <laughs> You're drunk. <laughs> I, I think I probably am. Well, where's is Leanna not with you today, huh? No, no, she's in Las Vegas. Oh, that pool shark. It... We do have a, a guest calling in. Calling in on the phone or coming in via Zoom? Calling in on the phone. All he's, right, I'll be ready for him. He's supremely low tech. I understand. Hold on. Just dealing with other stuff, getting rid of this so I don't have noises. Uh, very good. 